What's up, guys? It's your girl, Jen, and we are back with another episode. The setup is a little different this week because if you can tell, if you're looking on YouTube or watching on YouTube, you'll see that I have a guest with me today and I'm super excited because this is my first time having a guest on the show and his name is Ranger. Ranger? Yes. You want to say anything? <laughs> No, I'm saying I didn't want to cut you off as you were. Better not, because it's my show. Well, <laughs> it's rude and I don't want no problems. But yes, I'm excited to be here. I'm happy. I'm very excited. Because this is my first time doing anything public since something that, that has happened crazy that we'll probably get into or not. I don't know, but it's my first time. So I'm very happy. Yeah. Well, if you guys follow me on social media, you will know Ranger is my best friend. Um, well, we've been friends. I don't know how long has how long has it been now. I think I met like, you like 2010. I'm, a, I'm a, like 12. Okay, so like 13 years. Yeah, 12, 13 years. Yeah. Um, and it's just been like instant. <laughs> I feel like once we met each other, we were kind of like inseparable. So it's been lit. It's, <laughs> it's been, been a lit, lit 12, 13 years. And respectful. Yes. Yeah. And respectful. So today's topic, we are going to be talking about platonic friendships between the male and female species. And people, which, that's not that's not something that's that's possible. I know. I mean, people think that, but honestly, I feel like because I have so many, not so many, but I have a handful of male friends that I love and cherish and respect, and they have wives and girlfriends, and you know what I mean? Like, there's no beef. There's no weirdness. I love them. You know, I hope they like me. <laughs> um, I've had no issues. I respect boundaries. I'm married, like, everything is just cool. But even before I've been married, obviously, we've been friends. And I feel like we've always upheld a great platonic relationship. Right. So do you want to tell the story about how we met? Oh, no. Nah, First like, of all, cheers. Cheers. <laughs> we got the red cups out to die. <laughs> so it's a pate. <laughs> But no, hey, you can take it away. Me? Okay. So, I mean, it's a really quick story, to be honest. Um, I went to junior high school with people that you went to high school with. And because I had such a great relationship with them, obviously, our relationship continued all the way past high school, whatever. And it was the summer... Before I went away to school, and I remember we were at a mutual friend, a mutual friend party. Like he used to be like a party promoter. Everybody would come out to his party. Shout out to Kwame. I still fuck with the dogs. Um, <laughs> oh, I guess I should call him by his promoter name. Vibes up. <laughs> Anyways, um. So you and Kwame went to high school together. You and Brianna went to high school together. Um, you knew Ashley, which is like my dog since elementary school. So it was just like baby. a neutral so friend like situation. Baby. Hmm? That's a shout out to baby face. Yeah. So it was like a whole mutual friend situation. We ended up meeting in the club, taking pictures like we knew each other for years, going yeah. out, hanging out. Yep. And it just been like life ever since. As and Ranger met like all of my boyfriends. <laughs> Not that I had many, but the two, <laughs> my ex and my husband. And everyone loved you. <laughs> like yeah. and my ex was very I don't want to talk about him much, but he, he was just a more of a jealous person like he didn't really feel like men and women could have those relationships mm -hmm. um but he gravitated towards ranger and i feel like everyone does like my family loves ranger my friends love ranger my husband loves ranger like everybody loves ranger <laughs> i don't know what it is but he just has that energy that makes people feel very comfortable very relaxed like Damn. 
actually very happy when people say that about me. Everybody <laughs> loves Ranger. Thing I set out to do, you know, it's like I just I don't know. Like m- my lady and I, we have that conversation very often. Like I just make people feel comfortable. I don't know. It's like something I do. It's as easy to me as breathing. Like, she always said, that's one of those things I love and hate about you. Yeah, it is hard to be with someone like that. I feel like Steven's like that. And it's so weird because at least you're social, you know? Like, I feel like when me and you go out, we can have conversations with the whole bar or with the restaurant. Like, it's like we're both talkative people. Steven is not. And when people talk to him... (laughs) <laughs> he don't know he just really be wanting to be like why are you talking to me but he still engages with them and everyone always end up loving him and i feel like whenever we're out together people feel like i'm like the mean anti-social one and he's the social uh, butterfly and i'm like y'all got it all fucking wrong right now he wish y'all would not be talking to him right now <laughs> that is so funny because I, I was just about to say i don't get that of him at all I don't. No, he's not like that. But whenever we go somewhere, people always gravitate towards him. Like when we're on vacation, people are talking to him, giving him free drinks, calling them his friend, my friend, my friend. Oh my God. Like people just love him. And I just be like, hello, social girl over here. I actually want to have friends. I want people to talk to me. And they be like, no, not you, resting bitch face girl. That's. <laughs> Reminds me of when I go out with with Janaya and people go, "Oh, she's she's so nice and she's so funny." I'm like, "Who <laughs> <laughs> talking about? Ridiculous!" That's not <laughs> I know, but okay. It's so weird. It's so weird. But I think that's one of the things that I know. That's one of the things that I love about you: the fact that you are such a honest person. I feel like you always held me down anything I needed I know I could come to you you know like man's took a whole trip to Buffalo just to move my belongings from Buffalo to Brooklyn knowing damn well I was got to move right back from Brooklyn to Buffalo the next semester (laughs) two years and a few in the semester how long was it between it was pretty quick like a six and a half hour drive yeah (laughs) yeah but You know, that's, I don't know. Like I said, that's just what I do. I love you. I got you. That's just who I am. Yes. I am extremely grateful and humbled that you guys do feel that way. I really So, what do you think makes our relationship work? Um, We talk. And it's not like just a fake talk, you know? Like, because you're able to tell when somebody's being 100, when somebody's being themselves with you or, well, versus when they're just tolerating you or you tire or vice versa. You know? Like it's like, hey, oh God, Jenny's coming. Oh, hey Jen, <laughs> how you doing? I'm fine with you. So I didn't see you in so long. Like there's a reason for that. Like, you, know? <laughs> you know, it's not fake. It's just you can tell when something is organic and when it's honest. And it's I, I think that the thing about it is that we both understand the pressure of this is a choice, you know? A lot of times when people are in friendships or just in relationships, whether platonic or romantic, mm-hmm. they feel pressured, like, I have to be here. Like, you don't. Mm. You know, it's like, if you like it, then yeah. If you don't like it, then go. It, you don't have to vibe with everybody. I think or that's- feel like because you've been friends for so long that it's gonna, like, like, you have to stay friends, even though you're not feeling Right. Trouble. It's like, there's people I've known, like, literally maybe seven to ten years before before I know you, and <laughs> we don't have that relationship. And that's okay. But, you know, sometimes I, we put so much pressure on the relationship that we have to have. We don't do that. It's like, if it flows, it flows. So we here. You know, if it doesn't flow. Yeah. But the thing is, it flows, so we hear. A lot of people force it. We don't. I think that's part of the reason it flows, part of the reason why it works. And I also think that we have built trust with each other. Mm-hmm. Like, I know I'm able to tell you things that is not going to be thrown back at me. Mm-hmm. I know that I'm mm-hmm. able to tell you things, and I'm going to, I'm going to be able to count on you to be honest with me. Like just just tell me how you feel about it, and if that mm-hmm. 
if that means I'm wrong, then so be it. Yeah. You know, I know that you're not going to be like, oh, you're right, just because I'm your friend, you know? Yeah. I think that's a that's a big portion of friendship that I really love and cherish and respect from my male friendships that I don't feel like I always get from my female friendships. Yeah. Um I feel like I've I can be a thousand percent myself, a thousand percent honest with you, a thousand percent like raw and and that's really like with all my male friends and y'all don't take it wrong. You know what I mean? It's like y'all not taking it like I'm being spiteful or mean or like uh, do you, I don't know. Do you think that that may be because in female platonic relationships you have to uphold to being a friend and girl code? Versus in a fr- in a in a relationship in a platonic relationship with a male, you don't have to uphold to the bro code. So you just like your yeah, honesty is really all we need. Do you think? Because then it's like, let's say you do feel some type of way about something, and this is truly how you feel, and it goes it goes well with your honest with just your feelings, mm-hmm. but it doesn't goes good. It doesn't go good with the girl code. Maybe I think also women we are way more emotional and we tend to internalize things more. Mm-hmm. I find that men just kind of like y'all just be listening. Like <laughs> it's like okay, this is what you feel. My bad. Like, Sorry, like- <laughs> y'all not taking it in. Like y'all not internalizing and be like, oh wow, like right. Jen said that, but did she think about when she made me feel like it's never like a catch for catch? It's always like, oh, word, that's how you felt. My fault. That's not how I made you, meant to make you feel. And that's it. It's like, end the conversation. And I mean, obviously, I cherish my female friends. Um, and I think that it's so important for women to have friendships with other women because there's so much you can learn and grow from with those experiences. But I would be remiss if I didn't say like my female, maintaining female friendships throughout all of my life, it feels like has been very difficult. And I feel like whenever I feel like I find my tribe, something happens and then it's over. And then I'm like scraping, trying to find a new tribe. And so I found that, like, my male friends, however, I've been friends with you guys, you know, 13 years, 15 years, 20 years. Like, I have all these male friends that just get me, I don't know, in a different way. Um, And it's, like, such a respect factor. Like, none of my male friends do I feel if I was drunk, they would take advantage of me. Or if I wasn't married, they'll try to hook up with me or anything like that. I don't feel uncomfortable around them. I feel very much at ease, very much myself. Um, I think also I'm just naturally comfortable around guys because I grew up around men, like, well, not men, but like guys on my block, you know, like it was like three girls on the block with a whole bunch of guys. Like the neighborhood is full of boys and, Growing up with my cousin Kevin and being around all his friends. So it's like, all right, we playing ball. All right, we playing ball. Like, (laughs) and he looked at me like, girl, go to your ass down somewhere. Ain't nobody playing basketball with you, you know? But I really felt like I'm one of the guys. The homie, bro. Like, what's up? (laughs) Yeah, you know? And um, I feel like that's part of why our relationship works also because. I'm just like, <laughs> I just be like, nigga, listen. Yeah, I, 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 remember when we were, wait, remember when we were younger, you said that you was gonna, you was gonna be one of my, how you call it? One of my- Your groomsmen. I want to be your best man. <laughs> I do. That's so much. I want to wear the suit with heels, like, what that? <laughs> I think I'm deserving. I'm just saying. Put me as a groomsman or something. That's not happening at my wedding. <laughs> I think that shit is 
fire. <laughs> Dude, I really do. In a very funny movie. Um <laughs> <laughs> oh whatever whatever that would be that would be uh, like hilarious though that would be I hilarious. think that shit is fire and yeah. if you ever get married that put me be, down yeah, as a be, groomsman or a best man fact. You know, I want to be on that side <laughs> 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 in case you like it anyone put me on that <laughs> side I'll walk with a girl I don't got no problem uh, decision. <laughs> Like that's a woo, I don't even want to reach that decision. Like <laughs> who's gonna be who? Who's gonna be what? I'm really gonna elope. We out. Listen, listen. I ain't even want bridesmaids or groomsmen to be honest with you. Uh, I remember telling Stephen like, hmm. You felt pressured. No, I just I didn't want to pressure anyone. Like I didn't want to like. Because it's such a big job. Like, people really underestimate what it takes to be in a bridal party. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of money that goes into it. There's a lot of responsibility. And I didn't want to have to bother. I felt like it was like a bother for someone. I didn't want to have to bother anyone. I didn't want to have to think about dresses for them, what suits they're wearing, what color they're wearing. I was just like, it's going to be me and you walking down the aisle. Mm-hmm. That's it. Quick nuptials. We out of there. We going to party. But Stephen was like, nah, I can't get married without having somebody next to me. Like, he wanted his brothers. Um, he wanted his best friends since he was, like, in preschool and stuff. So I had to obviously give in. <laughs> I was like, all right, so who's going to be my bridesmaids? And so I just made it my sisters and my cousin. I was like, three people. I told him, I was like, because he got a gang of friends. Like, he has a whole football team of friends. So I'm like, nah, we can't do that. I'm not doing that. And so we cut it down to three people. And, I mean, it was great. I think that having them, having my sisters and my cousin, who's like my sister, there beside me on that day just really showed me, like, yeah, I made the right decision you you feel better having that tribe, you know? But honestly, before that, I was like, nah. Love so 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 dearly. Hmm? I said, especially when it's people you love so dearly. Yeah, and I knew they was going to take care of me. They, I love the fact that they didn't really, like, nag or anything. Like, they just let me do me. Like, all right, this is the dress you're wearing. I picked out everyone's dress individually. I was like, you don't need to come with me. I'm picking it off of you. <laughs> I'm like, this is the color. This is the dress. I'll have the makeup artist ready, like everything. And they didn't, they didn't argue with me. They wasn't like, I don't want to wear this. This makes you look sad. Like none of that. And so it came out beautifully. So thank you. You know, of course I wish you were there. Yo, I almost cried walking down the aisle and seeing you on FaceTime. Yeah. I had to turn my head. I was like, let me look over here because I can't mess up my makeup because I did not have my makeup artist yeah. on 24 hour call. <laughs> no, no, no. And just, I thought of that and that's part of the reason why I kind of battled with the idea of attended virtually, of attending virtually, but... No, I'm so happy that you did. I couldn't, I couldn't miss it. I was I'm like, so happy that you did. I could risk a little um, makeup. <laughs> Listen, only you would even have the strength and mental capacity after everything that you've been through. Do you want to talk about that? Yeah, we can talk about it. Okay. Yeah. Good. Oh, <laughs> Tell them what happened. <laughs> oh, long story short, I was hit by a car and um, lost both of my legs. And what happened? You was in the hospital? Yeah. Um, hit by a car, lost both of my legs. Hospital, um, what, a month, 11 days, 52 blood transfusions, eight surgeries. Yeah. No knees. That shit was crazy. Yeah. Yeah. It was, it was something. It was, it's, it's something that I am extremely grateful that I experienced because it shifted my reality. What do you mean by that? It made me it made me understand understand what's more important in life. 
And what do you feel like was important to you before versus what's important to you now? Uh, what, what a lot, what I believe a lot of us don't understand is that the most important thing in life, ev- in life ever, is time. Mm-hmm. That's it. So, it, you- so it's like now, if you if you pay attention to our relationship, I call you more often. That's true. I call you more often. We've been friends for. 12, 13 years, and this this last year and, and some change, I I call you more often. It was never no, like, you know, we're not speaking or nothing. It's just, yeah, you know, ranges. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, I move, I move. I'm that person for all of my, I've always been right. that person for all of my friends, though. And I took, and, do, and doing, and what I know now that I didn't know then was that I was taking that for granted. Mm. What happens when there's a time where you can't call? When I was like, oh, she'll call. I'm waiting on her call. Yeah. Now I understand time. I understand the concept of time a little more, a little better. So what I do is when I think of you, I call you. I love that. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you can do whatever you think of doing right now, do it. You know, That's the- how I feel about this podcast. Yeah, you know, if you wanna, if you know, if you wanna tell the person, like there's times where I scream to my brother, Brandon, yeah, I love you. It's, it's like because it's that cost that it hit me like yeah, instant. That's in that's that's what, and with that, it makes everything else precious. It makes yeah. it makes every time you spend precious, every second you spend precious. So now you picky about the person, the people you spend your time with, you picky about the things you eat because you want to either extend your time or you just mm-hmm. like, oh, this is what it is. Whenever I go, I go, I'm going to keep eating. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, so you make a concept, you make a, 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 a conscious, conscious decision based on on that information that time is the most important thing. You know, you, you call your mother more often. Hey, ma, I love you. We got to watch. Mm-hmm. All right. You know, like and things. you guys had a complicated relationship, um, but tough. I feel like you guys have been really, really good. Yeah, that's one. That's like one of my closest friends. You know what I'm saying? Because when you understand time, you understand like, okay, whatever, whatever happened back then, really happened back then, and yeah, trauma doesn't doesn't work. Like, okay, I'm gonna just forget about it. That's not how it works. So you don't forget about it. But while you nurturing those emotions that you feel about it, you still understand that you sub- you pass. You've made it this far. So now let's try to cherish this moment while still nurturing how you felt, how you feel about what happened back then. But how do you get to that? Because, I mean, you went through a very traumatic experience, right? Get into a car accident. You're not even a driver. You're not it's not like a collision. It's literally someone ramming into you, right? So yeah. then you have like well, I would think, you know, and I'm thinking about like God forbid this ever happened to me. I'm like I would like hate the person. I'd probably want to cause harm to this person. And then you go into like a depression. It's like, why am I here? Why do I, why am I existing? And then you can literally fall down a rabbit hole of depression after that. But I feel like you did the opposite. And I feel like that's a really strong tale of how strong you are because so many people would still be down. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, this is literally a year ago. Yeah. And some change, like a year and five months, six months. Some people would still be down, still yeah. like depressed, can't get out of bed, probably addicted to drugs. Like, how do you come out resilient after a situation like that? I think it's it's funny you say that because I know people, you know, being a double amputee, it, it's not... It's not like a a huge community. I think it's like six hundred of us in the world. It's like <laughs> the world consists of billion people. There's six hundred 
double MPTs, right? Mm -hmm. a, double MP, a double above the MPT is somebody who doesn't have their lower limb, but specifically above the knee. Excuse me. No, you're fine. Which, which in return, it makes it harder for them to walk because your knee is has that joint that... Mm -hmm. That makes it flexible to move. Right. So you don't have that balancing is balancing now solely becomes on your equilibrium, which you no longer have a full portion of. Mm -hmm. right? So okay, I'm sorry, I was going somewhere with this. <laughs> I was, okay, I was okay. So now, <laughs> when how you get over something like that? Yeah, you can't. But I don't mean like get, I don't expect you to ever get no. over it. Like how you, how you get past it so quick, you can't. How you accept it so quick, you can't. So you ask like everybody asks because you all know I'm still fighting the battle. Yeah. You know, but how do how am I so comfortable with it? I'm not. So how do you get up every day? and move and practice walking with your new legs and have a smile on your face and give things to God and praise him and know that he still has you here for a reason. Like, how are you able to do that without being able to forget or accept or... Because of everything I just told you, because I'm not comfortable with this. I'm not comfortable with it. It hurts me. It's a pain in my neck every day. But I know I'm either going to be beaten or I'm going to beat it. So as much as I'm not comfortable with it, as much as it irks my nerve every day that I have to get up and put on my legs and, you know, listen to that sentence. Yeah. Put on my legs. Yeah. Right? But, you know, like. It's like, okay, it's either you do that or you lay on the bed and you keep on eating them. And because you're not moving, you become bigger and bigger. And you now, you don't have no 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 energy or, you know, you can't get up. Now you can't walk. Now mm -hmm. you get in the wheelchair. Now your life becomes harder. Now you're beaten. Like, I'm not going to be beaten. That's the only thing. My, like, that's the, I'll get up, I'll fight every day. Because I it's I don't even think you realize how strong you are sometimes. Like, I think, I, I hear you say it sometimes, but I really don't know if you understand the magnitude of the strength that other people see in you and how you present yourself. Yeah, I think it's probably, like, one of those things where it's, like, our friendship where I just do it, you know? So it's kind of, like, you know, it's just so because it's because let's be honest, what choice do I have? Right. You know, for and I and I and, and I'm gonna say this not to be not to speak maliciously of those who, who are still battling with it mentally, where it, it keeps them from moving forward physically. Mm -hmm. Right. I just I want you guys to know the battle starts with your mind. So what I'm going what I'm about to say is not an it's not an attack at, at, at any of you guys, it's just for me. Yes, yeah. you know, it's a hard battle, but you know, we grew up watching Mike Tyson. You know, we grew <laughs> up in Brooklyn. You know, you know. I like, mean, did yeah, you grow so, up so, in Brooklyn we, though? The bobbing and the weaving already. You know, so <laughs> like, it's like you know, it's it's like to me, it's like I know if I see if I see. A punch coming, got a bobbin, mm -hmm. and counter, you know, got a weave counter, boom. Yeah, you know, that's that's what it is to me. I look at it like that every day. I wake up and go to the gym, and I walk with things in my hand because this thing annoys me. So I need to be the best at it so I could get to a point where it's just doesn't annoy me anymore. Do like, you think just, there like, would ever be a point where it doesn't annoy you in, anymore? I, Physically, yes. I think physically, yes. Emotional, uh, mentally, I don't think there's. I don't think I'm going to reach a point where I'm just like, well, it is what it is. No, yeah. I, don't, I, I think we say that because, uh, again, we're human beings and we just have to adapt. Because it's like if you sit there and you're like, oh, 
I don't have no legs. I don't have no legs. And it's like you holding yourself down. Yeah. So say it is what it is, but you don't mean it. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Like you don't. You wish that you could reverse right. the time reverse and reverse the time, but it's like where you at right now is is so important to you that if you could have the chance to switch back, you wouldn't. Do you feel like that now? One hundred percent. As much as I hate it, I hate putting on my legs. I hate. Taking an extra twenty five minutes to walk to 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 put on my legs because I don't if it's either two in or two out I hate that but I wouldn't go back mm. for nothing I wouldn't change my life for anything because I look at the good things about it and the, I feel the, like the best no, thing ahead. is understanding the concept of time. I feel like obviously you've. I feel our relationship, I've always learned so much from you. Um, But after this situation, I feel like I've learned even more from you. I've never really, it's like, you live in the city and obviously you see disabled people or just all people from all the walks of life, basically. But you don't really think about, like, damn, what got them there? Like, you know what I mean? And I remember when we went out to eat and you was in the wheelchair. And you was like, ooh, I bet you they're not going to ask me if I want to sit at the chair. They're just going to think I want to sit in my wheelchair. And I honestly never thought about that. Like, I go out to eat all the time. You might see a person in a wheelchair and I never think like do they want to sit in a chair or do they want to sit in their wheelchair while they eat this meal and I remember telling you like they even gonna they're gonna ask you ranger like they see this all the time you know because they're working in service and they did not and that was such an eye-opener for me because I was like wow like I I never thought of I never thought to ask someone in a wheelchair like do you want to sit in your wheelchair or do you want to sit in a chair because I automatically assume you're always going to pick your wheelchair because you're already sitting down. You right. know, like, why do you want to well, move? Well, but Well, that's because the eye is naked. Is You know, the the eye look at things naked. You look at somebody sitting and you just assume that. And that there you go. You say, you know, if it was me, I was sitting already. Shoot. <laughs> you know, but it's like you haven't been sitting on this specific type of um texture for the last, you know, 40 minutes or hour or one hour or three hours or however long it took for me to get here. I'm ready to change textures. That's what it is. <laughs> <laughs> you know? And, you know, and this is the reasons why we, our relationship worked. This is the really, really reason why platonic um, relationships between females and males work because of this right here. It's just, just talk. That's it. Like, it's, and if we cool, we cool, and if we not, if I'm, you know, if I'm the, if I'm the female, and I see that you keep on, you know, like I'm trying to have a conversation with you about you not having no legs, but you keep on saying, "Ooh, but you know, Jed, I like the way you did your hair last night." <laughs> like, damn, bro, like I'm trying to be serious right now. Yeah, like you feel me? Then you make that decision, like, yeah, this friendship ain't gonna work. You know, and that's that was just the perfect display of it. It's just we just converse. Can I ask you? So, a uh, not too long after coming out of the hospital and being home, you obviously was telling your story on social media, and you had started making jokes about yourself, like the classy amputee, and all right, making all these TikTok funny stories and I and I felt like I felt two ways about it and I told you about it anyways on one hand it was funny as shit and I'm like damn I almost feel guilty laughing (laughs) for laughing (laughs) because this is actually really funny stuff but I would always post don't forget you know don't be yeah yeah I know but I still feel bad okay but then on the other hand I remember telling you like I don't want you to feel like you have to be this way 
Like you have to joke on yourself to make other people comfortable right. around you. You know what I mean? Like, cause I think right. sometimes we can use humor as a tactic to kind of save face for ourselves. So we don't mm-hmm. want to have to talk about it all the time or be sad all the time. So we use hum- humor to like joke on ourselves so that other people feel more comfortable. Like, Oh, okay. I could breathe a little right, bit right. while I'm around him. But I, I just, I, I always felt like it was too soon, but what about you? Like, well, that's the thing with me, you know, when I, like my very, very, very first words from waking up from the coma. Right. Was like this, okay? Hold on, I'm about to try to get out. Okay? I don't want to laugh. Hold on, it was like this. <laughs> What's cracking, y'all? <laughs> I swear to God, as, as yeah, it, like, that, was, that was my very first thing, and <laughs> I say that I say that to say this. That's part of my personality, and one thing I'm not going to do is allow anything to shift it. You know, I if I have to force it, then it means I should not be doing it. Yeah. You know, if so I you don't feel I, like it was ever forced, it was never uh, a means to. I don't like people that much. That's what a lot of people. <laughs> <say>. <laughs> it's, like, it's like that's what a lot of people. Don't <laughs> I love people. I love people. You know, I love you as much as you know. We vibe. We cool. But if if I'm right now, I'm not in the mood. I'm not in the mood. Yeah, this, you know. And <laughs> if you know me, you know that. If you don't know me, I really don't. I really don't care. It's just like it's me, because there's times where you just have to be selfish, and I'm not going. I'm not, you know. I'm yeah. Not, not a paid clown. I'm not going to make fun to make people happy. Yeah. <laughs> you know, if it hurts me, I'm not going to. Yeah. So comfortable, but that was the thing. It's just part of my personality. You, you remember when I got shot? Mm-hmm. I got shot. First of all, listen to this, right? You, you know, I think I was dating um, Jenny at the time. That's the, that's what I was dating. I think that's what. I, yeah, like whew, she's a nice person, but so loud. Anyway, yeah. So I got shot. I go upstairs, and she comes out, and she's like, "Oh my god!" I've been like, "Whoa, whoa, whoa, whoa." People get shot all the time. I need you to calm down. <laughs> Niggas get shot every day, B. Yeah, like, <laughs> calm down. Like, you wildin'. Look, here's what you're going to do. Take these pants off. Get me some shorts or some sweats, I think. And I whatever. And she put that on. I say, and you're going to tie my leg. You're going to tie it tight, okay, to stop the blood. To, from, like, from, to put yeah, pressure. yeah, yeah. Put the but, pressure on it. Luckily, she was able to calm down and do that. And then after that, she goes, I'm going to call now. When I said, no, no, $700, you crazy. <laughs> and you drop my ass in the same emergency room. You don't call a cab. As if you will call a cab because I couldn't drive. Because oh, obviously. So I'm like, I'm like, if you don't call a cab. I said, call a cab. So the cab come down. And I said, sir, I think, I said, sir, I have $100 in my pocket. The quicker you get me to the hospital, the closer you get to $100. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Before I finished my sentence, I was in front of the hospital. <laughs> so, so now, um, I just, yeah, I, said, I got shot. I said, I need help. I need help. Boom. So they got the wheelchair, blah, blah. And I'm just sitting there laughing, joking. Bullet in my leg. I know. I'm, like, that's just who I am. Like, I don't try to do it. It's true. And all the nurses loved you. And there was always a line of people downstairs waiting to see you. And I felt like. I was like going to see a superstar. I felt like a groupie. I'm like, um, that's my best friend. They're like, yeah, that's what the last person said. I'm like, who the fuck said that? <laughs> I'm gonna be honest. That was the first time because, like we said, you, you know, this is I, I'm I'm who I am, and I just do what I do. Like I'm, you know, I'm just who I am. I don't force nothing. I don't fight against too many people. I, I I'm just I just try to flow. Mm-hmm. With, I do good if I feel like it, you know? 
<laughs> like, you know, if I feel like you a nice person and I feel like doing good to you, for, I'm going to do good to you. Yeah. And I not know this was, this was something that I do very often. Mm -hmm. I didn't notice that until this situation, because when, when I got shot, it was a lot of people in the hospital, but for this, for reasons we're not going to speak of. <laughs> I wasn't able to see anyway. So, I, <laughs> uh, so <laughs> I was aware of how deep, love was. <laughs> how deep the love was. So when this incident happened uh, a year and a half ago, and I saw the amount of love, prayers, oh my goodness. And I was like, Huh. Okay. I'm not as bad as I thought. Yeah. I it was it was it wasn't until then that I realized like wow, I'm actually a decent human being. You are. You're a beautiful human being and I'm so honored and blessed to have you in my life. Grateful for I'm great I really am grateful you feel like that. Don't say that. <laughs> Don't, <laughs> Anyways. I have to fight any you know what I mean? Shut up. Let's switch gears. We'll bring it back a little bit. So what do you think having a female friend does for the way that you think or like your growth as a man? What do you think they bring to the table? When you have a good female friend, you you have a sister. You know, you have a confidant. You have somebody that is going to be just as raw with you and you're going to understand that it's coming from a place of love. For mm -hmm. instance, if you were to ever find yourself on somebody's block that you shouldn't be about to <laughs> <laughs> and you happen to get a phone call <laughs> from somebody and two stories. Two stories. You normally would not answer these phone calls because you like you you feel <laughs> <laughs> somebody to go down. But you know, you have these things that's inside you goes like, yo, because you love this person, you picking up so much, like, are you okay? Because I'm about to go crazy right now, but I need to know, are you good before right. I go? <laughs> before I go crazy. Right. So this person now, you tell this person what you're about to do because that's that's your homie. You don't lie to her. Like and to her being a female, she just pull up to the block that you at, like, no, you're not. <laughs> <laughs> You know how to buy that. Like, give real that. stories have never <laughs> been told. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, give me that thing that you have in your hand that should not be in your hand. And, um, we out. <laughs> we out. We you know, out. <laughs> when you find that in somebody and you give that to somebody. You create the bond. It's it's not something that you could create a formula for. It's just do you got me like I got you? Yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like you you don't you don't like create it. It just happens. Yeah. I agree, you know. So I feel like I always tell this story, but whatever. So I have a, a homeboy, right? That I'm really close with. And <laughs> when I met Steven, we were dating for a while, but then uh, something happened. I wasn't fucking with him no more. I was like, you know what? Fuck him. I'm dead. I'm not fucking with him no more. And whatever. But obviously, I really liked him, so I didn't want to stop talking to him. Mm -hmm. And I'm like texting my homegirls at the time, like, what should I do? And they're like, Yo, this is crazy. Like, we never hear you talk about nobody, blah, blah, blah. They're giving me advice, but I ain't really listening to them. You know, it's like going in one and out the other. I'm like, y'all don't know what y'all talking about. And I ended up reaching out to one of my homeboys because him and Steven share the same birthday. <laughs> so I was like, maybe he'll understand where right. I'm coming from because they the same sign, same date, same everything. So, well, not everything, but you know. So I reached out to him. And I'm like, yo, Core, am I tripping? This thing is da -da -da -da. And I'm like going off about all the reasons why I want to stop messing with him. 
And he calls me. He goes, Jen, you like this man. I'm like, I mean, I do, but I ain't going to be. You know, I said, he said, no, 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 no. Put your pride aside. Mm-hmm. Go talk to that man. Because you ain't never called me about no man. No ever. man. <laughs> Yo, I was like, like, Ranger, I love him. I said, what? <laughs> Yo, when I tell you he put that in perspective for me, and it's crazy because obviously, like, you know, I'm talking to my girlfriends and they're telling me one thing. They probably were telling me the same thing, to be honest. I don't even remember. But I just remember his words sticking out to me like, you don't be caring about nobody. Don't let your ego make you lose something that could be so great. And I was like, okay. So really, I always say, like, the reason why me and Steven are is because of him. Because I was ready to just, like, cut it. And one thing about Steven, he's not a sumun. I don't know how to say that in English. It's a Haitian term. He's not a sumun. He's not, like, on people. I guess that's the best way to explain it or whatever. So when I told him I wanted to, like, dead it, he was like, if that's what you want to do, like, you know? (laughs) Yeah, like he's like mad chill, like look. Yeah, he's like, if that's what you want to do, I'm not gonna yeah, force you, cool. like whatever. I was yeah, like, I was... excuse me, I was so used to you know the opposite of like guys arguing or it's something yeah. toxic or whatever. And then I remember reaching back out I to him. That. Facts, he was so <laughs> like, girl, bye, because like, I got a whole kid. <laughs> I remember reaching back out to him, like, can we talk? And whatever. <laughs> and then as soon as I like spoke to him and explained everything, we were like right back to normal. It was like nothing. Yeah, was, like, like, so I'll rock with you. <laughs> he was like, I'll, I'll rock with you if you want to rock yeah. with me. But yeah, you want to rock with me. It's like, like, okay. I was like, oh, mm-hmm. this is different. Like, you know. But anyways, I feel like that's the benefits of having a male friend because you get to hear the male perspective you know what i mean like so many times i know i can call on you and be like range tell me why does this make sense like you know and we can talk about anything we talk about sex we talk about relationships we talk about money we talk about careers like there is no cap to like the discussions that we can have and i feel like you you know you know you can always come to me with me like Female so issues I, in the past or anything I'll be like coming that. To you like, I'll be coming to you like, you got five minutes? <laughs> which which you really know means like. <laughs> we need to talk. We need to talk, girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's going through it. Ranger, you may not be calling for, his girlfriend. Starts with like. Look, I ain't gonna hold you long. I ain't gonna hold you long. You got five, <laughs> you got five minutes and then an hour and 35 minutes, minutes later. later. <laughs> we'll be on the phone for three hours. Like, all right. I'm done saying what I had to say. <laughs> so much my chest. <laughs> it just feels so good. And, just, like, and then I just feel like you take it all so well. You just like, mama knows, child. Mama knows. <laughs> <laughs> It's a beautiful friendship. Yeah, it and, really is. And it um, is. you're always on point. I'm like, hmm, see, all right, you're right. All right, I'm going to try that. I'll be back. Yeah, you it's- just hear the different perspectives. I think it's it's amazing because sometimes, like I said, women can be very emotional. I'm not saying every woman, obviously, but I know for, I'll speak for myself. I know sometimes I can be very emotional and it's not the emotional like oh my god like i'm not crying or hysterical i'm usually like the opposite like i'm pissed off i'm angry i don't want to be here no more i want to run and like i feel like sometimes just speaking to my male friends they'd be like yo it's not even that deep and i'd be like it's not (laughs) you mean like you get it where like my female friends they're like yeah "Yeah, girl fuck that like yeah because i see what you're talking about away yeah they you always know, respond in an emotional way, and my guy friends always respond in a more logical way. That's yeah, like, yeah, but like, oh, this is how I feel about it. It's like, okay, <laughs> let's put that to the side, <laughs> <laughs> and let's think. Let's talk about. Let, let's put. It's kind of like when you go to court, right? Like we're the ones that actually <laughs> take it to court. Let's let's talk about the evidence. <laughs> you want 
Like, <laughs> you want me to send somebody to prison just because you feel like you did it? Yep. And like, if I feel it, I feel it. It's like, true. Like, it's like for women intuition. <laughs> <laughs> exactly and it works but every time what's it though because that woman intuition that woman intuition work every time okay it's when it's i wrong. feel just know mm-hmm. it ain't coming from yeah. nowhere okay but we try to we do try to approach things a little more logical yes. and i also think that emotional maturity yeah but i think that comes with like time and different people and maturity mm-hmm. and that's age and so that's I don't really perfect. feel like that's a gender thing, but no, but it comes. It's needed if you, you know if you're in the type of friendship like ours because you're married. You know your husband can be uncomfortable with it for yeah. absolutely no reason. You know, like yeah. I don't know. It's just something about it. It's just like I mean, I like- will say that though. I always felt like. Whoever I was in a relationship with had to be comfortable with my male friendships. Like, that was one of the first things I did when Steven and I, you know, became really serious was, like, bring him around you. Bring him around my college homeboys. Like, I just wanted him to know that when I say I'm going to the gym with Mark on Saturdays, there's nothing there between us. We're just going to the gym because we've been gymming together since college. Like I wanted yeah. him to feel comfortable. And the only way you can do that is like bringing him around. It's like, it's weird if it's a sneak link, you know, it was like, why couldn't you tell me that you was going to the gym with your homeboy? If that's just your homeboy, but why right. you can tell me if you was grabbing dinner with Ranger, if he's just your homie. So definitely having him around you guys was like top priority. You know what's the most fun thing about having, like, not fun, the most funny thing about having female friends um, is that when they get boyfriends, if if our relationship is close enough, they always wish that the person is gay. They, like, <laughs> they, they be like, because everybody that I'm friends with, right, all the females that I'm friends with, they like, you know, oh, I'm going to have dinner with Ranger. Ranger, hmm. You have dinner with him, like, you know, three times in a month. Is he gay? Like, what? No. I'm, like, what are you talking? I'm <laughs> dead. <laughs> like, what if it to be to have dinner with somebody? But that's um, the mindset, you know, because you automatically assume that a man and a woman can't be friends, but they really can. Like, there's some guys that you just, as a woman, like, you're just not attracted to in that way and vice versa you know like it don't gotta be nothing we could just be cool that's it like there's even guys that like i've dated and i don't care for at all anymore so i'm like yeah we could be like when i see you it's it's love like you know yeah it's like i ain't hating you i I think that's okay i think that's okay all right we're we're going to hang it out Huh? We're just about to be hanging out, like I right, yeah yeah yeah, yeah. I ain't doing all of that. But you know, if I if I see you and I'm out with Steven, I'm not gonna be weird about it. I'm not yeah. gonna be like oh, I'm not talking to him. Don't let him see me, like you know. <laughs> I'm a whole adult. I'm married, bro. Like bye. Yeah, I'm gonna pull up. Like oh, what up? You know, it ain't nothing. Yeah. All right, we're about to play the instant bond game. The instant bond game. <laughs> Is this like game like? The instant bond, the instant bond, the instant. Is that is that the? Instant nah, bond? I just made that up. I you know, like, like Blue's Clues. The instant. I feel like it's the instant bond. <laughs> you know what you look like with the puffs? You look like one of those like nineteen nineties commercials about new new products that came out when they when they try to do infomercials like that. You know what I'm talking about? No. Well, that's what Mm-mm. you look like. Era. You all grainy. Era. You all Computer grainy. Computer says no. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Let's get it started. Let's see. The first question. Wait, wait, wait. wait. I'm a bad test taker for some reason. Every time I play a game, I feel like I'm taking a test. It's a not a test. Play. It's not you a test. I'm going to close my eyes. Kind of. Okay, first question is from the friendship category. What mm-hmm. embarrasses you the most in front of people? 
What embarrasses me the most in front of people? I feel like you're not embarrassed anymore. I was about to say, like, but I don't think, truth be told, I don't think there was ever a time where I was like, oh, I'm embarrassed. Like, I'm... <sighs> I think before it used to be your hair situation. You know what? <laughs> <laughs> no, but I don't. But see, no, not even that because that wasn't done because I was embarrassed of it. Like it was more like I wanted different solutions to something <laughs> I was unhappy with, and then I just came to find out that there's no way you could get different solutions. Like you just gotta have to go bold. It just is what it is. Like, I tried the wig. <laughs> I tried it all. I promise you. I was paying $300 for haircuts. I wasn't even <laughs> going to tell them that. Oh, no. Nah, I'm not ashamed of it. <laughs> I just put the fan on because I'm obviously hot. So, like, let me know. No, I can still hear it. You're good. Okay, good. Um, I say for me... I'm easily embarrassed in front of people when I mispronounce something. I get so embarrassed. I'm like, oh my God, this person thinks I'm not articulate. They think I'm slow. They think I didn't finish junior high school. Like, I just automatically go into, like, I'm so embarrassed. Oh, it could be an act. Oh, yes. So, yes. If it can be an act, then what embarrasses me? I'm Haitian, as you know. <laughs> We know. <laughs> Unlike Jen, like Creole is actually my first language. Don't come for me. I'm coming for you because I'm saying you was. Yeah. Don't come for me. Talk I'm about like, you was raised in Brooklyn. I'm saying, <laughs> but right. So there's still some words I can't pronounce. <laughs> <laughs> What's one word? What's one word? I can't pronounce it, so I'm not gonna say it. <laughs> if I pronounce it. <laughs> but the fun thing to me is like the the most embarrassing thing to me is like when I'm around like especially like Janaya mm -hmm. or like her if I'm around her and her family and I I try not to speak too much. <laughs> 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 because it's like everybody knows I'm super intelligent and I'm super like, you know, I, I get things done. They know yeah. who I am. So um, but there's things that sometimes like and this is funny because I never I never spoke of this before, and it's like so sometimes when I'm in public, like if I I try to be cautious. <laughs> certain words, certain words be like, Ooh, I first of all, that. they're in the right way. Like it mm. just be like, let's keep it basic English. <laughs> <laughs> not basic English. <laughs> you know, not English too. You know, not not the red textbook, the blue textbook. Let's do it that way. Um, I'm red dead. 11 graders. I'm good. Oh my God. All right. Next question. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I think we kind of got into this already, but still, do you prefer a yes man or a friend that's a hundred percent honest, even if it comes out mean? I'd rather my I'd rather my friends, anybody, my I'd rather anybody in my life to be that like just be honest with me, no matter how you feel about it, you know. Like even if it comes out mean, it no, I if you can't find a nice way to say it, like. <laughs> Then, you know, be like, look, you know, Ranger, you know, I love you with all my heart. I'm trying to find a nice way to say this, but I can't. <laughs> you know, that way going your head, bro, is ugly. <laughs> like, like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> look, let me tell you. Because for me, y'all ain't shit. Let me tell you why. Because y'all... <laughs> y'all brought me... Who is y'all? Because remember, when you put it on, you tried to front like your hair grew. And I said, <laughs> wait, wait, wait. I said, Ranger, now you know. And you was like, shit, girl, you could tell. <laughs> Yo, bro, when it was hot, oh my God. <laughs> you used to be paying. Bro. Patch your leash. Oh, 
my God. Wait. Good times, good times. Oh, good Jesus. times, good times. All right, all right, all right. Let's I go can't. to another question. <laughs> oh, oh. All right. This one is from the self category. Mm-hmm. And it says, What do you do to practice self love? Mm. What do I do to practice self love? Well, to be honest with you, it wasn't until I think it was episode three of the um um instant bond of um, my pod- little podcast. Huh? No, it's true. I'm serious. <laughs> I think it was episode three of I think it was episode three or four. What was the so- self love versus self care? Self- yes. Mm-hmm. It wasn't until that episode. I understood the difference like oh wow so you know like I'll go to the gym like oh this is self love man you know, it was like nah, <laughs> kind of like self care homie because it's like yeah you know, this is trying to keep your body fit you know so with me now I try to read a little more because I used to read a lot mm-hmm. did a lot it kept me calm it kept me informed um kept my vocabulary up because <laughs> like, I just did you know English is a brother. English it's not, one. It's like, it's not like English third language. English is my third language. It's Creole, French, and English. <laughs> um, so now I try to, you know, I try to do that a lot more because it did a lot. It did a lot for my confidence. It did a lot for my, um, for for me mentally. And um, at, what's the word I'm looking for? Mm. Educated me a lot. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I th- I think it's so important for men to also speak about these things because yeah. so much of like when you look on social media and you look like up the hashtag of self-care or self-love <laughs> it's literally flooding with women and men need that too. Like they're all humans and so I feel like you guys also need to recognize when you need to take the cape off, you know. Mm-hmm. Put the armor down and just like relax and and love on yourself and take care of yourself and do all those things to prove to yourself how much you love and care for you. So right. I think it's important for even men to have those discussions, even with each other, like men. I think I think it's also important because excuse and- me. I'm sorry. I didn't. I didn't know. <laughs> I'm be honest, I will be honest. I didn't know that that was de- detectable. So I, took, <laughs> I, I, I hear everything. <laughs> but so look, I'm. Um, I'm trying. I'm trying to see how do I. Do you talk to these things about? Like, do you talk about self love and self care with your friends, your male friends? Yeah, that's what I was about to say. I'm trying. I'm trying to find a, way, a best way to the best way to incorporate what I'm about to say. So, a lot of people don't know different sides of me, different versions of me. Yeah, because when you love people, you protect them from certain things, you know. Mm-hmm. And, but me growing up the way I was raised, and in the communities I was raised, I was exposed to a lot of. Um, urban you know upbringing yeah like up, right and i feel like one of those one of the biggest problems that that we have is that we don't have those type of conversations in those types of neighborhoods we don't have those type of conversations with those type of um people that are being brought up in those types of neighborhoods yeah so, return they don't know that that's a different way yeah i think it's all it's even for me i would say that's something i've been learning as i've gotten older it's definitely not something i was taught as a child right exactly Mm -hmm. but but right you know what i'm saying and and i feel like that's why i feel like that's exactly why it's more important not just to, to 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 men not just to black men or, or white men, but people, but men in those small neighborhoods, like in those, Rural. you know, those urban, urban. neighborhoods. Yeah. yeah, you know, those, 
I don't know what would you call them neighborhoods that that are like that in different countries. Where, what? <laughs> you know, like, like like the people that live in like um I don't know what you, oh he'll he'll be the ghetto. Are you talking about yeah, the ghetto? Like, Ghettos, right? Okay. Thank you. The hood. Yeah, I told you. See, perfect display. <laughs> I told your ass. Yeah, we like, ain't talking about that in the hood. Yeah, <laughs> we talk about it. and I and I feel like it become we have a bigger problem in our hands because of that because nobody knows there's a different way. I didn't know there was a different way until I was just certain. I was like, so you tell him this whole time I could have just been nice, <laughs> like. I, but I you have to just... think like when you are living in the urban society of like you know single parent homes or not Nobody have having time. food on the table, you're not thinking about that. You're just trying. Ain't to nobody survive. got time for that. Like, I'm too. I'm too busy trying to feed these kids. Yeah, you're just trying to survive, and so yeah. the all you all you want to do is keep your head above water. So. Yeah, all be- a battle it all becomes a fight yeah so you yeah. can knock them but i i i pray for that for everyone i hope that yeah. everyone finds yeah. it in their own way whatever it is and means for them and i hope that you know this podcast helps to build those conversations amongst people obviously i know i'm not like nationwide yet okay the key yeah. word is- <laughs> the key word is yeah yeah <laughs> but you know, with my little platform, I just hope that people see the bigger picture of what I'm trying to do. Mm-hmm. And I think that's very important because, like I said, um, with me, I listen to it mostly when I'm in when I'm in my car. And um, like I said, I learned. I think by the third. And I'm and I'm not saying this because it's you and we're friends. Because I told you before when you said thank you. For yeah. Me, I was like, shoot, thank <laughs> yourself. It wasn't, if it wasn't good, I would have told you like, yeah, but I'm going to listen to it because you don't know, homie and all that. But uh, I ain't really digging it. You know what I'm yeah. saying? But with you specifically, um, it was with the third episode that I learned something that I'm going to live on. Like, I'm going to take on for the you. Rest of my life. I'm saying like I love that the difference between like self love and self cares. Oh, wow. <laughs> it's just that I, simple. You know, I'm buying like Cerave, you know, for my <laughs> like, do do all love, the you know, things, baby. I gotta take keep care this of thing. Uh, yeah, um, that's self care, homie. <laughs> with, with that's, it's on the self care list, but listen, we making decisions, constant right. decisions to love ourselves every single day and tell ourselves what that when we look like? in the mirror. What I'm sorry, I said we're making conscious decisions to love ourselves every day and look at ourselves in the mirror and tell ourselves that we love each other. We love ourselves every single day. It's Can practice. You, it's the work. What What made you such a such a um? Hmm. Again, it's stuck on another word. <laughs> I told you. No, but like you such a a a a good representative for 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 self care and self love and 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 mental health. You such a an amazing in my to, in my opinion, you mm. such an amazing representative of that. Can I ask you why? Why is that important to you for you? Because I know you. I know you don't take no shit. <laughs> like, look, if this shit come in here to disturb my mental peace, it could go. It doesn't matter <laughs> what it is. I don't care. I'll be like, so just, how is this person? Boy, I speak to him like 13 years. <laughs> <laughs> he did this and this and that, and I told him I was feeling it. <laughs> then I just ain't been feeling him. So I know you don't, you know, with me, I'm now learning that before because there was a lot of people here. Well, we we're not gonna say names. There was a lot of yeah, a lot of people that you know that literally should not have had that that see for so long. Yeah, for so long that you should have had much. That was too long. Yeah, like how are you able to to, to determine when something 
not just how, but how are you able to determine when something is like not healthy for your mental for your mental and why is it important for you for you and for you to share? Mm. That's like three questions in one yeah. second. <laughs> Question. Do we got enough time? <laughs> I had to make up for the times I had to, to, to stutter on the word. It took a while to come out, but we got there. <laughs> um, first of all, thank you for seeing me in that way because I don't always see myself in that way. Um, I feel like I've struggled with internally with my own happiness and still now um i feel like i have imposter syndrome where it's basically feeling like you're just not good enough pretty much like it's it's all a lie like i can do all these amazing things and then be like mm, no i can't really it, it becomes a time where i just turn around and be like you can't do that jen why are you doing that and i'll shut down and i won't do it anymore Mm -hmm. because I believe that, like, I can't or I shouldn't or I'm not worthy. Um, And I just got tired of feeling that way, to be honest with you. Like, it's so exhausting, and Mm -hmm. it takes a big hit on my confidence. Um, I remember going talking to, like, a therapist for a while about that, and she used to try to give me, like, assignments to do to try to figure out where it stems from. Mm -hmm. Um. I ended up leaving her because I didn't like her. <laughs> but okay. I, so I, I never figured out where it stems from. But um, did you ever figure out where it stems from? Where, where, why did you like her? Where that yeah, I know from? why I didn't like her. She was yawning one day while I was telling her a story. And I didn't like that. Hey, oh. I was like, did that make you sleepy? I bore you? Oh. <laughs> Excuse me. Are you going to sleep? I you? Back. Like, yeah, that pissed me off. Um, but <laughs> oh my! But you see what I'm talking about? Like you know, when something like when something just don't work for you, you be like, yeah, I'm out. Yeah, I think it's a good and bad trait though, because sometimes um, it prohibits me from working things out with people. Yeah, but I also feel like a, in in I can't speak for all the time because I obviously don't know all the times, but. I know for a lot of the times I know of, you've tried. To... Yeah, I just always feel like, I don't know, and it, and that could be part of it too. Like, I always feel like there's something else I could have done, you know? I feel like I'm now getting to the point where I'm accepting when, when shit just don't work no more. I'm just like, you know what? That person's not there. All right, bye. Like, you know? And it hurts to let people go. I I think people don't speak about that enough. And it's definitely a topic I want to talk about soon on the podcast. It it hurts to let people go. It's not easy. It's not like, oh, I know. It's not like, oh, I let them go and I'm living my best life. Like social media makes it seem like, you know what I mean? Like I let them go and now I'm just so free. <laughs> you know? It's like, no, you cry, you feel sad, you feel bad, you feel confused, you get even more pissed then you get resentful then it's like a whole like layering of situations that happen i don't know how i've been able to do it i think part of the reason is because um i don't like conflict that's just how i am i'm not a big conflict person i don't get mad easily i don't like to argue but when i get upset about something it's important for me to voice why I'm upset, how I'm feeling. And when I feel like the person is not listening, that's a big deal for me because I'm not that person, you know? Like, I'm not a complainer. I'm not going to come out and just complain about everything that you're doing. I let things slide. I take things with a grain of salt. And so when you finally do something and I speak up about it and you treat it like it's not a big deal or it's nothing to you, then it makes me feel like I don't want you around me because you don't care about how I'm feeling, and right. if you don't care about how I'm feeling, then why should I care about would the next time you have an issue and you need my advice or you need my help or, you know, it's just like and now it feels like the relationship is one sided and I don't care for those type of relationships. Right. So, yeah, I hope that answers the question. <laughs> it does like deeply, but it does. Shut up. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, but this, this, that's something that I'm, I'm not learning and I'm, you know, I, 
I think I've been practicing for like the last year and some changes. It took me losing my legs to be like, oh, heck no, y'all ain't gonna treat me. This yeah. Way. yeah. You know, like, you gotta know your worth and then ask yeah, back. Well, like I said, the, the, the concept of time now is, is, is seen in such a total different lens. It's, it's not even funny. Yeah. You know? Let's ask this last question and we'll wrap it up. This is my longest episode. And I had a feeling it would be like this because it's me and you and we just never stopped talking. But I think it was really good. I think it was great. I think it was really good. Hi. This is cool. We love y'all. Yeah, I keep listening. I got one last question. (laughs) All right. The last question is, when did you realize that you were not prioritizing yourself? After I lost my legs. Mm. Yeah. After, after I lost my... Do you want to answer that first or should I go first? No. I feel like my about to be like a little... No, tired. go ahead. I want you to go. So when I lost my legs and I came out the hospital, it was like I said, everybody, and shout out to everybody who was involved, Um, everybody who ever said anything nice to me, whether I know you or not, excuse me, I truly am appreciative of that. Excuse me. However, it was like immediately after favors were being asked of me. Mm. As you said, I bounced back in the eyes of the public yeah. pretty rapidly, right? So, you know, within two weeks out the hospital, I was already driving. They're like, huh? Yeah. So, so now it's like, yo, can you come? No. <laughs> I'm not picking you up. No, I'm not give like this. No, like yeah, these things are being done one to keep me moving, two because they're absolutely necessary. Because it's like I can't call somebody to come and take care of me every day mm-hmm. or take me where I need to go. So I need to figure out how to do it. But it doesn't mean that it's it's something that's easy enough where I can I'm, do it for you too. Yeah, like I must be like on oh, no. a. No, I remember one time it was snowing outside. And I'm talking about it was like a snowstorm, like mm-hmm. a storm. Mm-hmm. Now, everybody know I drive a big Dodge Ram truck, right? So yeah. I, so my truck just drive through snow like it's water. It doesn't even bother it, you know? Yeah. I say a shout out, mm-hmm. shout out to my truck, <laughs> um, right? So somebody called me, mind you, it wasn't even when I had legs. I was still in a wheelchair. Mm. I didn't even have stubbies then. Wow. Told me they're stuck. And they want me to come and get them. And I'm like. Wow. You want me to come and pull your car out the snow? One. I'm going to have to dig my car out the snow. Right. Though my truck is tall. You know, I still have to clean my. Yeah, of course. You feel me? Like, I'm going to have to do that. Like. That's so selfish, though, and not in a good way. And then, when I realize you want to know, so you would think, when do you think I prioritize? Now, with that story, when do you think, when do you think I realize, I realize that I wasn't prioritizing myself? In that moment? In that phone call, right? Yeah. I realized I wasn't prioritizing myself when I was outside in the snow in my wheelchair trying to make it to my truck. To help the person. To help the person. And Janiya, she was with me. And you know Janiya's, you know, she's, she's, she's Ranger, no. Yeah. She, she said, I'm, I, I'm mad I even made you made it this far. No, call him, tell him that's not happening. You you walling. That's when I realized I wasn't prioritizing myself because, like, yo, you don't have no legs and you're still trying to, like, but you know, like, away. I always just did these things just out of just, that's just who I am. Yeah. Like, I'm able body. You need me. I got you. You feel me? So it it carried over to when I wasn't able bodied, and I'm just like, it's not that I can't, but it's like you really should not. Yeah, like that. There, there comes a time when you need to just stop. Yeah, girl, I'm walking around saying no to everybody. Now I'm like, nope, <laughs> nope, 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 nope. You nope, don't nope, feel nope. good. <laughs> Great. <laughs> no, but I don't do it selfishly, but. You know, if there's a time where I do feel like no is needed, I try not to push myself. Yeah. Yes. Because that's something I used to do often. Wow. I I mean, I think that's really selfish of someone to do. Like, it's so inconsiderate. 
you know, more than selfish. It's just inconsiderate. It's just not nice. It's not kind. Tell me about it. Who that person is. Let me know after this. I give them a call. You want me to beat them up? <laughs> nah. <laughs> I beat them up. It's actually a really nice, like, it's, it's actually a really nice person. Of uh, A really nice friend of mine. It's just, I guess, just very. They just deserve a slap. Oh yeah, you know some. <laughs> like, I, wake I, up, stupid! Like, like, oh yeah, you thinking? Oh yeah, thinking. <laughs> is this working? Hello. Clearly, they're not. <sighs> Range. It was Am good I, having you today. You had AAA. You could have just called AAA. That's a fact. Or you could like, just get yourself out. Like you want to use one of your rides. So you want to use me. Exactly. The, get an Uber. Is. Like, what? Unlimited resources out here. We're living in America, people. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for joining me today, Ranger. It is my pleasure. Thank you for having me. This was so fun. I had to have, have a conversation. It's just like, again, I'm yep. going to Wow, I need 30 minutes. <laughs> I know. My podcast episodes face. are always like 30, 35. <laughs> an hour and 20 minutes later. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to tell the people where they can find you? Um, Yeah. Range and Young on Instagram. is R-A-I-N-G-E-R-Y-O-U-N-G. On Instagram. Yeah. Really, uh, please welcome. All you guys are welcome. <laughs> All my little oh. followers. No, I love you guys. I love my listeners. I appreciate everyone for listening. I don't care if it's only one person. I've been actually getting listeners from like France and Germany, which is really mm -hmm. freaking cool. So I'm yep. just so excited to watch my little platform grow. So excited to have you guys. Yes, keep it coming. Keep it coming. Healthy conversations. Um, do not forget to follow us on Instagram at Instant Bond Pod. And you can also find us on TikTok at Instant Bond Pod. And if you have any questions, comments, concerns, you can always email us at Instant Pod at Instant Bond Pod at gmail.com. And don't forget, you can buy your Instant Bond game on Etsy by clicking the link in our bio on Instagram. As always... Thank you for sharing some time, space, and energy with me. I love you guys for listening. Until next oh. time. Bye. <laughs> Ranger, I'm going to call you. <laughs> All right. Bye. Bye, guys. <laughs>